okay, welcome. Now we're going to do a demo on the magnetic dip angle. So let me explain a little bit about the magnetic field of the Earth. The Earth, uh, as you know, has a tilt of 23 and a half degrees, right? The geometric axis of the Earth has a tilt like that. And also the magnetic field has a tilt that is similar to the Earth's, but it's not exactly the same, right? It's offset from the, the geometric axis by about seven degrees. So you can think of the magnet, uh, the uh, magnetic field of the Earth as encompassing a huge magnet. This is the north geometric pole, north geometric pole, and then this is the south geometric pole. And then you can visualize as if there is a magnet here like this. This would be the south magnetic pole, south magnetic pole. And then this one here will be the north magnetic pole north magnetic pole. So then the way that the magnet works is magnetic field lines come out of the north magnetic pole, wind around and go to the south magnetic pole. So it comes out here like this, then they wind around like that, then they go into the south magnetic pole. Notice that the way I drew the magnetic axis is not exactly the same that I drew the geometric axis. They don't necessarily have to be exactly parallel. On Earth, it's about seven degrees. There's planets, for example, like uh, Neptune and Uranus, where the magnetic axis and the geometric, geometric axis are offset from each other by about 45, 46, 47 degrees. So they don't necessarily have to coincide, right? So then the, uh, the magnetic field lines come out of the north magnetic pole. They go around, they go into the south magnetic pole, right? Okay, so you can see here, wherever the magnetic field lines are coming out, if you're at the north magnetic pole right here, the, ma the compass will point uh, up from the ground. We call that the dip angle. So since it's gonna be coming out of the ground, we call that a negative dip angle, negative 90 degrees. It's gonna be facing up like this, right? Now at the Earth's equator, this is the Earth's equator, <clears throat> right? The magnetic field lines are going to be kind of parallel to the Earth, like this. So the dip angle is going to be approximately zero. Why? Because it's going to be horizontal to the ground. So dip angle is going to be zero degrees. The negative 90 is going to be over here, right? At the north magnetic pole. And then as you go to the north pole, the magnetic field lines are starting to go into the, into the ground, right? So the magnetic dip angle is gonna be positive by convention. This is just by convention why we're calling it negative or positive. Negative ones are coming out of the ground and then the positive ones are going into the ground. So then by the time you get to the south magnetic pole, a south magnetic pole, the dip angle, if you're exactly at the uh, south magnetic, magnetic pole, the dip angle is gonna be positive 90, right? So any, uh, any location above the Earth's equator, the dip angle is going to be positive, right? That means it's going into the ground. And then a dip angle uh, in the southern hemisphere is gonna be uh, negative. So now let's check the dip angle here for Los Angeles, right? Right, and then I have another one, an older model, right? So you can see here that the compass is uh, pointing into the ground, let me see. The compass is pointing into the ground and then I touched it by accident. Now, if we were at the Earth's equator, this compass would be pointing straight this way towards the, this, dire this direction is the north uh, geometric uh, pole right here, right? So the compass would point straight this way if we were in the equator. But now you can see here that it's actually facing down and the dip angle, if we get closer to it, it's going to be, this is 270, so that's 10 degrees. Uh, this is uh, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40, 50, about 51, 52 degrees. So since we're above the Earth's equator, by convention, that's going to be uh, positive 52 degrees, right? Now, if we were closer, like if, we, if I was living in New York, then this would be this would be even further down like this, so it would be 60 degrees. And then if you keep going more north, positive 70, positive 80. And then if I'm at the uh, North Pole, or we can call that the South Magnetic Pole, is similar to saying North Geometric Pole, right? So if I was at the South Magnetic Pole, 
then this one here would be exactly down, so it would be positive 90 degrees. Now let's, let's check this other model, and it should be about similar to that. So you can see here, so that's going to be here uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So this is about 55, 56 degrees. And then this one, let's see if it's still showing the same. 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, 50, about 53, 54 degrees. So it's kind of fluctuating. So they don't exactly agree, but you can see they are in the ballpark of each other. Now, if I bring the two compasses together, you can see this doesn't really work because compasses are actually magnets, right? So the two compasses attract each other and then they line up. You see, they wanna kinda of touch each other, feel. So you don't wanna bring the two compasses together because they interact with each other. Okay, so with this uh, simple demo, you can see here the concept of the magnetic dip angle for LA, it was about 52 to 55, 56 degrees. So we, we were above the Earth's equator. I was below the Earth's equator, I would have been uh, it would have pointed up and uh, by convention the angle would have been negative. So how is this useful now in modern aviation? So in modern aviation we use compasses that are more intended to show the horizontal component of ma uh, Earth's magnetic field, the horizontal. But the compass tilts down or up and it affects the accuracy of the compass reading because of the dip angle of the, the, the vertical component of Earth's magnetic field. That's what a lot of people don't realize. The Earth's, the Earth's magnetic field has a horizontal component, and we usually are measuring that horizontal component. But it also has a vertical component going into the ground or out of the ground. So a compass will point sometimes dip down or sometimes dip up, and because of the friction, the, the compass, the ball, the ball of the compass will not uh, turn nicely, and it won't show accurate reading, and it can mess up the pilot's reading of the compass, the direction uh, in, uh, in the uh, application of aviation. So to account for that, the compasses have to be made with some give so that the ball can rotate vertically and horizontally without much friction holding the, the compass and uh, without much friction affecting its accuracy. And it will also is a good uh, way to show basically where you live, right? The higher up you uh, live, your location, the further the dip angle becomes larger, and then the closer to the equator you live, the, the compass uh, will show more horizontal. So if you're kind of lost at sea, and you're not exactly sure where you're at, it can guide you to the, where you are, and it can show you are you closer to the equator, or are you more northern hemisphere, or are you more in the southern hemisphere. The dip angle had been uh, thought of and uh, uh, devised back in even the 1500s. People knew about that and they used it in navigation, okay? Thank you very much.